Drift Innovation. Drift Innovation. 4K. Welcome back to a brand new video. About a week ago, this company called Drift uh, sent me a couple of cameras to test out. I used this on my bike at the race at the weekend for the very first time. Since that, I've got a lot of questions. I've had a lot of questions about the cameras. So I thought what I would do instead of bringing you along on my usual pre-race um, ride vlog, today's video, I'm going to do a tech, cycling tech, Cameron cycling tech product review video. Full disclaimer, I was sent this camera, um, I was sent it for free. I'm gonna be comparing this camera to my GoPro Hero 7 that I paid full retail price for. And even though I got this camera for, for free, you know, I love my GoPro. It's, in my opinion, it's probably the most versatile camera in the whole world. So it's gonna take a lot for this uh, for this little gadget to, to overhaul the GoPro, but I'm open-minded. First off the bat, in terms of size, in terms of physical appearance, it's a similar size to the GoPro. When it's mounted on the bike, they, they kind of look like this. So, you know, the, the drift is probably a little bit more aerodynamic. It's a little bit more streamlined, but for the most part, they are very, very similar sized cameras. For the purpose of this video, I'm gonna be recording both cameras in 4K resolution. So if you've got the ability to change the quality to 4K, up it right now to get the full experience. In terms of the setting up process, it was very similar between the GoPro and the Drift. You connect it to your phone via Wi-Fi connection, and then from there, from the interface, you can you can alter all of the settings. And I noticed that the apps were were reasonably similar. I didn't touch any of the advanced options. I just changed the basic things, such as the quality, and I also turned on image stabilization for both cameras. And I'm going to go and try and test the cameras in a wide range of different light situations and uh, just try and paint an all-rounded picture and let you guys make your own decision as to what you think is the best all-around onboard action camera. Well, I don't run off. I don't. I don't bite. Guys, I found some uh, alpacas or llamas. I feel like I want to say alpacas. Oh, okay, they don't want to be my friend. What is it? Do I smell? All right, on with the test. When I'm out on the bike, as you all know, I use the Sony RX100 point and shoot camera. It's small, it's compact, it shoots in 4K. The audio quality is pretty good. But uh, just to give you guys a little bit of a test of the microphone and kind of the vlogging capabilities between the two cameras, I thought that I would do this little vlog section. So right now we're using the GoPro Hero 7 and now I'm switching across to the Drift camera. Hopefully this gives you a little bit of a comparison. Hopefully you can hear me. There is an option on the drift camera to change the microphone sensitivity, but I've just kept it as standard for now for the purpose of this uh, for the purpose of this video. So yeah, how does it sound compared to the GoPro? It 
it is it's fairly windy today but the sun has come out so I'm not going to complain I've guys I've tried to pick a fairly varied route today I've headed into the lanes but I've tried to pick a varied route with some trees uh, to, to create some different light conditions I mean the lighting is pretty good in general today and right now I'm about to head down a descent with some some gravel patches some rough road hopefully gives you a bit of an idea as to how the two cameras compare and also how the stabilization compares I've not seen any of the footage yet I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna check it all out when I get home but uh yeah let's do some last last little test before I go home um... Okay, nice little pre-race ride ahead of my Zwift race this evening. Uh, but I'm home now, I'm gonna grab a shower and then I'm gonna switch across to the computer where I'm gonna check out the footage from the two cameras today. All right. Okay, okay, okay. Where do I start with this? Um, okay, initially I think I wanna delve into us. Uh, the first thing I wanna mention is the automatic orientation issue with the GoPro. I'm not sure whether it's because of the vibrations or the angle of the GoPro, but a lot of the, a lot of the time when I turn it on, I use the one click to record feature where you just literally press the, press the on button, press the record button, it turns on, it starts recording, you press the same button again, it stops recording and then it switches off. A lot of the time when I use this feature, it doesn't allow the internals, the, the sensors to adjust itself accordingly. And a lot of the time I get footage like this, which it's just basically, it's just upside down. It's not a huge issue. I simply go into my effect controls and change the rotation by 180 degrees. And hey presto, the problem is solved. Whereas the orientation feature on the drift camera is simply controlled by manually by by your hand whichever way this little arrow is pointing here is the orientation in which the camera will film i think the one underwhelming or overwhelming issue with the drift camera is and especially when i did the vlogging segment was how cropped in the screen was the gopro has a much much wider field of view i went into the settings of my drift camera and made sure the field of view was at its widest setting and it was which is like one, 120 degrees, I think. And the GoPro just has a much, much wider lens. You can, you know, you saw from the footage there. And especially when you're trying to vlog, the GoPro is a much better camera for, for first person vlogging. You just get more of the surroundings in the shot and it's not just like your two eyeballs and, and your glasses. Also the image stabilization, uh, when the roads weren't too bad, you know, when you went down a, a pretty standard road, the image, the image stabilization was, was, was decent on both of them. It's still better on the GoPro, but, I think what I'm trying to get at here is it wasn't too bad on the drift camera. It was adequate, but the problem started to lay in when you when I went down some some pretty pretty rough descents with some gravel patches. The cameras, I remember looking down at the cameras and they were shaking like crazy. Uh, and the GoPro still seemed to smooth for the most part, uh, smooth out of that footage. Whereas the drift really did start to start to fail with the stabilization in that area. However, for me, the massive, massive, massive upsell to drift is simply 
is simply the battery life. Uh, I mean, guys, I recorded that race on, on Sunday. It was a three hour race. I pressed start at the start of the race and I pressed stopped at the end of the race. And you know, that like, I just had footage from the, I just had three hours worth of footage and the camera still wasn't out of battery. Drift also sent me uh, like an external battery pack, like an extra life battery pack, they call it. And I didn't even need that. So I'm keen to see how much battery this has. It didn't have too much left. I, I filmed it in 1080p. Uh, three hours continuous and I think I had like 25% battery left so there was still something left but today I did about 45 minutes of filming and my GoPro is on 34% battery uh, whereas my, my drift camera is still it's still showing three out of three bars of battery. So I think moving forward, what am I gonna continue using for races? At the minute, for the longer races, I've not really got an option other than to use the drift. And you know, I don't wanna make this out like it's it's, it's a bad camera. You, the race footage from, from Sunday, yes, the audio wasn't great and I should have deleted it. And I, you know, I thought I did delete it, but it turns out I didn't delete it and the audio uh, sounded horrendous. It was a particularly windy day, but that's not, that's, it's inexcusable. Uh, but in terms of the onboard footage with the telemetry overlay, I thought it was okay. I thought it was acceptable for, for the vlog and for what I need and what I use it for, for these onboard race videos. Um, you know, for the longer races, I'm gonna, I'm happy and I'm definitely gonna be continuing to use the drift camera. However, for the shorter races, for the crits, for the one hour races, it kind of just makes sense to go for the camera that, that provides the, the better quality. I just wish that somehow I could combine these two cameras and use the battery life of the, the Ghost and the quality of the GoPro and just to create some like mega action camera. Okay, so I think in conclusion, to wrap up this video, both of these cameras have, have their place. For the longer races, I'm certainly gonna be sticking with my drift camera. And then for the crits, for the shorter races, I'll switch back to GoPro. That way we can benefit from the best of both worlds. But guys, that is the end of today's video. I hope you enjoyed this little review video. If you did, be sure to leave a like. And if you've got any suggestions of anything else you'd like me to test out in the future, be sure to leave a comment and let me know. But with that being said, thank you for watching and I will see you tomorrow at 4 p.m. Peace.